the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Merry Christmas. I, I mean, Happy Easter. God bless all of you. I'm reading this passage from the beginning of the Gospel of Matthew. Uh, even though it's the Easter season, today is the first day we're going to be praying a special prayer for our parish uh, in honor of St. Joseph, praying that he will intercede for our whole parish. He's the patron saint of the whole universal church, so we're going to pray to him during these days leading up to May 1st. May 1st is the feast of St. Joseph the Worker, so we're going to pray uh, for workers, for people who are out of work, for uh, uh, all those who um, are in need of his powerful patronage and protection. We're going to pray for protection from the coronavirus and from all evil. So uh, we'll be praying that little novena prayer at the end after I give a little reflection. Uh, again, um, you know, this year we've been hearing from the Gospel of Matthew, uh, and uh, we've been studying the Gospel of Matthew. We've had some Bible studies. And we've learned that he's the son of David. He's the one who was born into that royal family, that he's the, the expected Messiah, Christ, the anointed king who is going to fulfill the promise that David's ancestors, his dynasty would last forever and that there would be a great king that would come uh, who would be a, a king forever. And so the angel told Joseph, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife and uh, she will bear a son and you will call his name Jesus for he will save his people from their sins well that's what we just celebrated of course at Holy Week you know that he saved us from our sins that's what his name means Jesus means Yahweh saves of course that also shows that he is Yahweh he is God uh, because it says uh, Matthew uh, the, or the angel says he, for he will save his people from their sins. So he is God. So these are beautiful words, um, but it's especially beautiful to see St. Joseph, his character, his personality, because uh, what, what it says next is that um, the angel told him to take Mary and name him Jesus. And so in verse 25, this is chapter 1, he took his wife and he knew her, knew her not until she bore a son, and he called his name Jesus. And so Joseph is the obedient one, isn't he? He's the one who obeys completely. Uh, whatever the angel said, he did it, you know, boom, boom, boom. And then later we know what happened after the baby was born and the King Herod was jealous and trying to kill all the babies in Bethlehem to try to get rid of this, this king child. Um, um, an angel appeared again in a dream to Joseph and said, several things. Um, rise, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt. And in the next verse, what does Joseph do? He rose, he took the child, and by night, and his mother, and he, by night, and he departed from Egypt, for Egypt. And there he remained until the death of Herod. So Joseph was the obedient one. And and as we prepare for the Feast of St. Joseph, uh, the worker, we can think about how he was probably very obedient and very diligent and just, you know, always, you know, um, doing what he should do in every moment. Uh, if only we had more good men and fathers and workers who would, you know, put in a good day's labor and be responsible and be present for their families and, and do God's will in every little thing. So that's why Joseph is such a wonderful patron. Uh, and you know, St. Joseph is the patron saint of just about everything. I've got some nice pictures here of St. Joseph. This, this uh, image of St. Joseph was actually painted by a wonderful Catholic novelist named Michael O'Brien. Uh, very beautiful, tender image of Joseph embracing the, the child Jesus. 
but uh, but Joseph can help us and Joseph can help everyone uh, because he is part of the family of God right he was so close to Jesus and he's certainly very close to Jesus now the Saints tell us that um, that uh, since Jesus obeyed Joseph during his life um, certainly um, uh, when Joseph asks him to do something now, he probably still obeys. Jesus kind of will listen to his foster father, St. Joseph. So, so if we pray to St. Joseph, uh, it's very effective. And the saints say that uh, you can never go wrong you know, asking Joseph to pray to Jesus for you up in heaven. I'd like to just mention all the different things that St. Joseph is the patron saint of. First of all, he's the patron saint, obviously, of husbands. He's the patron saint of um, fathers. He was obviously not the physical, uh, biological father of Jesus, but he was the husband of Mary, and so he was the foster father of, of Jesus, and he cared with tender love for the child Jesus. And so he's the patron saint of parents, uh, certainly of fathers especially. Uh, he's a patron saint of men in general. And he's the patron saint of workers, obviously also of carpenters, engineers, craftsmen, uh, people who buy and sell houses. He's a patron saint of, of many different things. He's also the patron saint of um, accountants and people who take care of finances. You know, these are difficult times for a lot of families. And so St. Joseph, we can ask him to help us, you know, balance the budget and the checkbook and, you know, to uh, care for those things because Joseph was you know, uh, mindful of providing for uh, the Holy Family. St. Joseph also is the patron saint of um, immigrants and of pilgrims and of uh, pioneers, anyone who goes to a new place. Obviously, they had to flee into Egypt and they, for some years, they were uh, immigrants or foreigners in a different country. So uh, St. Joseph uh, took Mary and, Joseph and Jesus and brought them to a foreign country. He's also the patron saint of expectant mothers. He's the patron saint of uh, pregnant women, of single mothers. He's a patron saint of families that don't have a dad. Single mothers uh, certainly can ask his intercession and his help and protection. Uh, he's also, the, therefore, he's the patron saint of nuns and religious sisters because obviously you know they live in convents where it's a bunch of ladies living together and there's no man around the house and so saint joseph is the patron saint of of religious sisters and convents and and every religious order of sisters and many religious uh, saints can tell you the miracles that saint joseph does for religious sisters in their convents and their Maybe I'll tell some of those stories in, in the coming days during our novena. Uh, he's also the patron saint of prayer, of people who pray, because St. Joseph was a contemplative. He prayed, and, and in fact, everything he did was a prayer. When he was doing his woodwork as a carpenter, when he was in his living room, and the child God-man was playing on the floor in the, in the, in the house there, Everything was a prayer, and the Queen of Heaven was his wife. What a beautiful uh, thing, that everything for him was prayer. So he's a patron saint of, of anyone who wants to grow in your interior life or learn how to meditate or uh, to, to pray, to do mental prayer. He's also the patron saint of those in doubt, those who worry, those who have anxiety. Obviously, it was a, a strange thing that his um, espoused wife uh, or his um, uh, fiance was found to be pregnant. He uh, had to grapple with that. He trusted that she was a virgin, uh, but nevertheless, it was certainly uh, something that might have caused him to, to have some doubts. He's also the patron saint of priests. Why is that? Well, because what do priests do? We, we hold the body of Christ in our hands. And so Saint Joseph took the body of Christ and carried the child Jesus in his arms, and so he's the patron saint. He's also the patron saint of a number of countries, of Mexico, uh, of um, Canada, 
um, I, uh, Peru, Vietnam, and, um, and then he's also the patron saint of, uh, as we know, a happy death. He's the patron saint of a happy death for three reasons. First, because um, he was the uh, foster father of Jesus, who is the judge, the eternal judge. And so he can intercede for us with Christ, who will judge us when we die and go to the Lord. Uh, secondly, he's the patron saint of a happy death because he's called the terror of demons. St. Joseph is very powerful in, in, in asking uh, for protection from evil spirits. Uh, he's very powerful in that way. Uh, he's had such a pure heart and the, the husband who protected the Virgin Mary and uh, the Holy Family from the attacks of the evil one and King Herod. And so he's really uh, uh, powerful against evil. So, um, so, you know, at the time of death, there could be temptations. There could be, you know, attacks from the evil one. At the last moment, we pray, you know, at the hour of our death that Our Lady and, and St. Joseph will be uh, with us. And then thirdly, St. Joseph is the patron saint of a happy death because he died uh, when Christ was young. That is the tradition because we know that uh, when he was older, it's, he does, she's not mentioned, so perhaps he had already passed away. Uh, but when he passed away, certainly, who would have been there? His son, his, his uh, adopted son, Jesus, and Mary. So what more can you ask for? To have Jesus and Mary at your deathbed. That's what we all want for the moment of our death. So he's the patron saint of a happy death. And so St. Joseph is the patron saint of everything and everyone, practically, right? So that's why perhaps he's also the patron saint of the universal church. The whole church, you know, we are children of God the Father, and we are children of Mary, our mother. We're brothers and sisters of Jesus, and so who's our father? Who's your father? Who's your uh, foster father, your spiritual father? Saint Joseph. He's the patron saint of the universal church, also because the church is the body of Christ, and Joseph handled and embraced and hugged and protected the body of Christ, the, the child Jesus. And so he protects the church as well, the body of Christ in the world. So we pray to St. Joseph and we ask him to bless us. And, and uh, so at this time, I'm just going to uh, pray this novena prayer with you. Uh, this is the first of the nine days. And I'll just ask you to uh, look at our um, Facebook page, our YouTube channel, and our website. And, and uh, uh, look at that prayer and pray it every day for the next nine days. Four presentation parish for all of our men, fathers, uh, workers, the unemployed because of this crisis, for families, uh, for all of those who need protection and help in any way. So we pray to St. Joseph. This prayer is not original. I actually cobbled together a number of beautiful ancient traditional prayers and on the website I uh, indicate which, um, which um, some of them, uh, where they come from. Uh, um, part of it certainly is from the prayer that Mother Teresa, St. Teresa of Calcutta prayed with, and her religious sisters, the Missionaries of Charity, still pray every day. Um, so uh, it's very beautiful prayers uh, that we can pray every day in this little novena. So let us pray. Dear and good St. Joseph, who so lovingly cared for your little family at Nazareth, Pray for all workers and their families. Assist those who have lost their jobs in this time of crisis. Help each of the families of our parish to enjoy a happy Christian family life. Be a father to us all and watch over us, even as you cherished the Blessed Virgin Mary and her Holy Child. O glorious Saint Joseph, through the love you bear to Jesus Christ and for the glory of his name, hear our prayers and obtain for us protection from the coronavirus and from every evil. O spouse of the Immaculate Virgin, obtain for me a pure, humble, and charitable mind and perfect resignation to his holy will. Be my guide, my father, and model through life, that I may merit 
to die as you did in the arms of Jesus and Mary. O glorious Saint Joseph, through the love you bear to Jesus Christ and for the glory of his name, hear our prayers and obtain for us protection from the coronavirus and from every evil. Remember, O most pure spouse of Mary, ever virgin, my loving protector, Saint Joseph, that no one ever had recourse to your protection or asked for your aid without obtaining relief. Confiding, therefore, in your goodness, I come before you and humbly implore you, despise not my petitions, foster father of the Redeemer, but graciously receive them. Patron of the Universal Church, pray for us. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, I give you my heart and soul. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, assist me in my last agony. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, may I breathe forth my soul in peace with you. May God bless you and fill you with Easter joy during this holy season, and may St. Joseph and his bride, the Immaculate Virgin Mary, and our Lord, their Son, Jesus Christ, bless all of you and your families.